Hello. <coughs> Today we will be discussing different types of system based on the architecture and the various different kind of services provided by the operating system to the user and to the system itself. So we have seen in our previous session the different kind of or the evolution of the operating system, how it has been evolved from batch OS to multitasking. Today we'll be discussing based on the computer architecture, the different kinds of computer system. Based on the architecture, there are two different kinds of computer system, single processor and the multiprocessor. In case of single processor, there is only one CPU in the computer system which has the ability to execute one general purpose instruction. In single process system, there's a limitations that it can execute only one instruction at a time. Whereas in case of multiprocess system, as the name suggests, it has more than one CPU and it can execute more than one task at a time based on the number of processor available in the computer system. The multiprocessor computer system is also known as parallel computing system or tightly coupled system. As the name suggests parallel because it can execute more than one instruction or more than one general purpose instruction at the same time. So that's why it's called parallel computing system. <clears throat> so this computer, this kind of system has got more than or greater than equals to two general purpose CPU. CPU is basically a hardware. So <clears throat> this kind of system basically shares various computer resources like computer bus, memory and various peripheral devices like mouse, keyboard, etc. In this kind of system, there are several advantages which I am going to explain. First advantage is throughput. In case of multiprocessor or tightly coupled system, there will be obviously an increased throughput because there are more than one CPU available for executing the user instruction. In contrast, single processor system has the ability to execute only one instruction at a time, whereas in case of multiprocessor system, it has the ability to execute more than one general purpose instruction at, a at the same time based on the number of CPU available. So for example, in a dual core system, there are two CPU and in a dual core computer system, since there are two CPU, it has the ability to execute two instruction or two general purpose instructions at the same time. So that's why we say here one of the advantages of multiprocess system as an increased throughput because it is, it is obvious that it can execute more amount of instruction at the same time in contrast to single process system. Next advantage is economy. Suppose X is the amount that you, you have wasted or you have used in order to buy a single processor computer system where you have got monitor, you have got mouse, keyboard, memory, etc. Similarly, you have got you have purchased multiprocessor system say for example dual core system which also have got mouse keyboard monitor memory etc okay so the amount of memory and the quality of monitor keyboard and mouse are of same that you have uh, used in for single process system so if you compare the amount for buying the single process system multiprocess system it is obvious that 
multiprocess system will be economy. Why? The reason I'll show you. So, say for example, you buy a same uh, configuration computer system. Okay. So, you have bought two computer system of same compute, same configuration. Okay. So, and you have bought a uh, one computer system or multiprocess system with some value of same configuration then it is obvious that the amount you will be wasting to buy a multiprocessor system with same configuration will be much much less than buying the two of same computer two of same configuration computer system because in case of multiprocessor system you will be sharing you will be sharing monitor memory, mouse, keyboard, etc. So you will not be wasting unlike in buying two computer system of single processor. Okay, so it is obvious that the amount with which you will be buying the monitor or the amount required to buy monitor, mouse, keyboard, memory, etc. will be reduced. So that's why it's called okay, economy in scale. So in short, buying two single process system of same configuration will be cheaper than buying single multiprocess system as most of the resources will be shared like monitor memory peripheral device etc so that's why economy is scale next is the increased reliability so if consider a system of dual core system with some configuration and suppose one cpu fails then it is very very obvious that the other cpu will handle the situation or will continue the execution of user process but whereas or in contrast if you talk about the single process system if one system fails or if one cpu fails the entire system collapse okay. now let us talk about the types of multiprocess system there are two different kind of multiprocess system symmetric and asymmetric in symmetric multiprocess system there are multiple cpus and multiple process parallel in executions so each cpu will execute each different process so multiple tasks at the same time such kind of symmetric multiprocess system share common memory common resources common register okay next another type of multiprocess system is asymmetric multiprocess system which basically uses the concept of master slave here out of many cpu one cpu will be considered as a master and will entirely working on behalf of the operating system that master cpu will uh, assign to different cpu the process for execution so basically it uh, uses the concept of master slave architecture next with the advancement technology we'll discuss uh, distributed system with the advancement in technology we can connect multiple computer system together in a network there are several advantages of doing so some of them are resource sharing computational speed up reliability increased reliability and communications so whenever anybody is designing a system a distributed system as shown in a diagram always it has to keep in mind that there is absence of global core and there is absence of shared memory means that there is no common clock and there is no common uh, memory location where each and every different user of the computer system connected via network can store their information okay. so now with the advancement technology it is practical that we can connect multiple computer system using the network in the small area or in the wide area so there are several advantages which i'm going to explain First of all, resource sharing. Suppose there is a huge information which I want to store in a computer system. Now, since there is a limited memory space, okay, and the amount of memory required for storing such information is very, very large, you can accommodate entire thing in a one computer system. So in such kind of system, and if you have got such kind of network environment or distributed environment, then you can divide the information in small small segment and store it into different different computer system okay so it's called divide and store 
next is the computational spin similarly if you have got this distributed system where different different computers are connected with each other and you have got the user program to execute now all those user program which have got say for example the user program have got hundreds of subroutine now those hundreds of subroutine if it has to execute in single system then one after another it has to execute whereas in case of distributed system so function one can be executed here function two can be executed here function three can be executed and then so on like that way you can distribute the execution of different subroutine in the different different computer provided those subroutine are in with independent of each other next advantage is the reliability in reliability means your system has to continuously execute if some system fails so for example this first system fails due to some problem maybe network is gone or something problem is there then in that kind of situation the other system is still continues to perform task so it will increase the reliability next is the communication so they can communicate with each other for sharing of information say for example one person is uh, located at one location another one another person working in another computer system is geographically located very very far so if they want to share information they can very very easily share information without moving from one place to another okay so it saves the time as well so to have such kind of system we need a special kind of operating system called network operating system that should provide some features like file sharing how can you share the information or you can share the file between this uh, two nodes or two computer system connected via network and how can you communicate okay how can you allow communication between those uh, two nodes or the system okay so this is all about the distributed system this is a very very brief okay about the distributed system now you must have always heard about the very very common architecture of the uh, distributed system like client server uh, architecture client server system okay in client server system or the client server system is a special type a special case of distributed system in which only two systems are connected with each other one is the server and the one is the client the client will give some request to the server server will process the request and send the result back to the client so for example you want to search something in a web so for example you want to search something in a web then you give some keyword into the google search bar right and you hit the search button that keyword will be received by the server google server and will be processed and whatever is the result will be sent back to client so this is very very simple client server architecture and it's one kind of a special case of distributed system now since so now we have studied special uh, now we have studied different kind of computer system based on the architecture now based on the application there are different kind of system first one is the real time embedded system or in short embedded system okay that is basically designed for accomplishing some special kind of task for example microwave oven for example smart tv and for example washing machine you may consider this example because in this kind of system there is special os that is installed in it that serves certain purposes only next is the <coughs> multimedia system that is basically used to handle the multimedia like video file processing of video files audio files image files etc next is the handle system that handle system a system that is something you can hold in hand like pda your cell phone etc handle system designer have some big challenges that in a small uh, within a small uh, area you need to accommodate so many things keeping things in uh, performance in in the mind of the designer okay so these are the different kind of uh, system that you can explore on your own i have given the rough definition so now uh, we will move ahead to uh, real time on uh, the operating system pertaining to real time embedded system so why real world is uh, real time is attached with it because uh, time constraint is attached with it okay any system which is a real time should accomplish task within a given time frame okay it should definitely complete its task let me give an example so for example bottling okay bottling so 
in case of factories where bottling is done okay what they used to do is that bottle will come in a row and there is a machine okay hanged over ceiling okay that will put a cap on top of bottle so in a in a equal interval it has to put a cap on top of bottle so that is an example of real time system so in order to run a real time embedded system there is a special kind of operating system design that is real time operating system so real time operating system basically works on the principle of time constraint it has got well defined fixed time constraint that it should complete its task now if within a given uh, defined time constraint if it does not complete its task then it indicates that system will fail there are two different kind of um, uh, real time system the one is a hard and the one is soft uh, in case of hard if if uh, the system fails because it has not made the time constraint then some disaster will happen whereas in case of soft real time system if time constraint fails then uh, it hardly makes any difference to the user let me give an example for um, uh, hard and soft okay one each say for example hard in nuclear plant and all okay if something some wrong button is pushed okay for some wrong reasons then it will create a disaster for example in case of soft suppose you want to search some information in the internet and you have given the search options in the google now due to low in the poor internet connectivity you might not get the result so that is an example for the soft real time system okay so that's all for the uh, real time operating system now we will talk about the operating system services there are list of services that operating system will provide to the user and list of services that operating system will provide to the system itself system itself is computer system let us take one by one each okay first is the system services operating system services provided to the user so one of the very very important is the ui that is user interface each and every individual provide uh, gives services of ui to the user there are different kind of operating system like uh, mac uh, windows linux you must have seen some of you must have seen all three and have seen that different different ui is given okay so let us talk about some basic thing only so some of the common user interface uh classifications is a cli bi and gui cli stands for command line interface in command line interface you give the command on the console or the command prompt for execution operating system will interpret that command and will do the some task next is the bi batch interface bi stands for batch interface where group of command where group together and stored in a file and an operating system will execute group of task at a time Okay, so in batch OS, it allows the user to give batch of uh, command. And the last one is the GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. Very very common. Uh, nowadays, all the operating systems are based on the GUI for ease of users. Okay, which is one of the uh, objective of designing the operating system. Ease use ease of operating system users is very very important. So GUI have plays a uh, significant role so gui is through gui the user can interact with the computer or give the command or the instruction to the computer system or the operating system to perform some task next is the program execution so operating system should provide a service so that the user can execute the user program efficiently user can execute the user program efficiently how so it should the operating system should be able to locate the user program load it into the computer memory if there is no memory in the ram you need to find it out or the operating system need to find it out the free memory space load the program manage the memory and then start executing for ex starting execute it need to assign the resource so it should execute the program and at the end it should provide the result it should terminate the program okay so the termination of the program can be normally or abnormally if it is normally terminating the program well and good if it is not normally or it is if the program is terminating abnormally then it should give the information to the user 
uh, abnormal termination along with the regions. So program execution has to take this smoothly, and that is the uh, that is the task of the uh, operating system by smooth execution of user program. Now next is the I/O operation. During the execution of the user program, the process the process may demand for some peripheral device or like printer or I/O device. Okay, so, or user user input. So, whatever we will scenario, it is the job or the task of the operating system that whenever the process is demanding any I/O services, then it should give the resources to that such process and keep track of it. Next is the file system manipulation. Operating system should also allow the user program to create a file, to delete a file, to search some file, or to modify the existing file. So it should allow various file handling operations. Communication. So now in a system, in a computer system or in a multiprocessor computer system, it may happen that two or more processes are executed concurrently being executed or simultaneously being executed. So in such kind of situation, those two processes may want to communicate with each other. So it is the job of the operating system that it should provide a medium with the help of which those processes should be able to communicate with each other. So basically communication in operating system is generally implemented with the help of message passing or the shared memory. Okay. So message passing means it, uh, one process will share the uh, will send the message to another message through some medium or uh, through some bus with the help of bus. Another one is the shared memory. One common memory will be assigned to those uh, two processes where one process will write it and the process will read it and other process will write it and the process will be reading it. So that's the concept of shared memory. Another one, last one is the last service that is provided to the user by operating system is the error detection. So operating system should be aware of all possible errors that it may encounter. It should know each and every different kind of error that it may arise during the proper normal flow of the computer system. So having detected any kind of error, it should perform or it should act accordingly. The operating system should act accordingly based on the detected error so that consistent operation is being performed. Next is the we will discuss now the list of services provided by the operating system to the system itself, to the computer system itself. The first one is the resource allocation. So there are so many different kinds of resource attached with the computer system. All the management of resources like for example CPU, memory, uh, IO device, all these resources has to be managed by the operating system. Management it should keep track of how many resources are there, who is being allocated, which resource, when you have to get it back, etc. etc. So basically the main job of the operating system to act as a resource allocator. Okay. Next is the accounting information. So a computer system, a single computer system may be used by more than one user. So it is the job of the operating system to keep track of all possible users and various resources that is being used by different different uh, users. So all accounting information, all accounts, it has to keep track of it. The number of users, the number of resources used by the different different resources, sorry, the number of resources different used by different different users. And the last one is the protection and security. Now, uh, it may happen in case of multiprocessor system that two or more process is executing concurrently. Two or more process is executing concurrently. So it is a job of the operating system that those two concurrently executing process should not collide with each other, should not disturb or in, uh, intercept with each other. So smooth execution of concurrent has to be uh, ensured by the operating system. Now, apart from that, uh, apart from that, OS uh, also operating system should also ensure uh, that the resources that is being allocated to pro, um, different different process or the uh, different different process are to be uh, accessed, uh, dispersed in a controlled manner so that you do not enter in a deadlock situation. So those things has to be kept in in the mind of the uh, kept in the uh, services of the operating system. And the last one is the security. Security is very very important because because the, the, during the execution of the user program, uh, the security of the execution of one program should should not hamper the execution of another program. So the there are there may be two or more program executing concurrently in system. So both 
the execution of the program should be secure to each other in addition it should not it should also check operating system is also should also check that the execution of certain program may not access its internal code like kernel kernel code or system 32 file code for uh, that may disturb the uh, normal execution of the computer system so system 32 files are considered to be very very critical file nobody should have the access and nobody should have access uh, to for modification so if something uh, some files have been deleted from system 32 file then your system computer system may not work properly i am giving this example with respect to windows system so in short the operating system has to ensure the security for execution of user program in addition it also has to ensure itself that outside program is not disturbing uh, itself for um, normal execution I hope uh, I had made it clear. Thank you. If you have any questions, please post. Thank you.